Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Keely Allen and welcome to a really, really different repot with me. By that, I don't really mean the subject matter, I just kind of mean the location. So I have had to improvise, okay? I haven't got around to buying kind of like a table and chairs to do repotting in here. I haven't bought the equipment to kind of stand and propagate in this unit yet. I haven't got any of that. So I've really improvised today. I'm on a chair from the front office and this is the stool that I take my photography for the plants of the shop in, the product photos. So I, this is going to be a bit different. It's not quite as visual as maybe I would like. Uh, you get a living wall. So that's good. So today, I won't waste any of your time. Today I have a box of Hoya to repot. You may be able to see them in there. The pots that I'm gonna put them in are admittedly a little bit large, but things are drying out in that studio really quickly. So I'm not very worried about it, but I have some of the original Hoya that I hold here to repot. I do have more of these. I just don't actually have enough pots. So I'm gonna put the ones I have today. And then when I get some more, we will do another repot probably on this bar stool because I don't think I'm going to be able to use anything else. Now I probably can't pick up what I've got, I'm gonna try, it's very heavy, but I'm gonna plant these higher up into a mixture of Hydrococo 6040. So it's basically half Lekka, half uh, Koya. I've been using it for other Hoya upstairs in my hanging pots and they've done really, really, really well in this mix. So I'm gonna be using them. I don't think I can actually... Let's try. Oh my God, that's heavy. There you go. That's what I'm using right now. That was really hard to lift. I'm ashamed to say it. How heavy is this? I will get on my gloves. I've got some questions. This is how ad hoc this is. I have some questions written down on a notepad that I'm kind of going to just sort of lean over and look at and then we'll chat. Um, I have a really shitty old pot to scoop out said mix. This is going to go everywhere. I already know this, but I have a pot to do that with and we'll just get going. I can't see the time on my camera, so hopefully it's not gonna cut me off at any point. But let's just get going. I've got a few different things to talk about. I did a, I can't breathe. I did a story post on Instagram a few days ago, just saying like, what do you want me to chat about? So I've just kind of selected a few talking points, questions, whatever you have, um, and we'll go through them. I think looking offhand, we've got a little bit about the shop and the wall, uh, a little bit about the launch, the next restock, oddball questions that are unrelated, some stuff about online, being online, talking to people online, the crap online. Just a bit of a mix, really. Let's cut this bag open. As I say, this is really quite a good mix. I think, I can't remember why I bought this mix. Why was that? I think I just needed to pot up some plants in soil that I was gonna have up there. So we picked some of this up from the pot shop, the same place that I get my actual lecker from. Um, it's just really cool. I'll try and get some out just so you're actually totally in the know about what it looks like. So you have Koya here. I'm sorry, I can't come up to the camera. I'm about two meters away from the camera right now. But it has Koya in there and it has little balls of liquor as well. So I'm going to be potting up the Hoya with that. And let's take out a Hoya. I will tell you what they are when I pull them out and we'll just pop them up. It should be a straightforward process because I have, you know, a really nasty pot um, that I got from Amazon. They're not very nice. They're the only things I can find. I thought they were smaller than this when I ordered them. They're supposed to be like 9.5. To me, that's way bigger, but what do I know? Um, so yeah, I'll talk you through what I have. Really crappy plant pots from Amazon. Don't know if I recommend them yet, but they do have drainage. They're just white plastic and they have a little drip tray, which is nice. So I've got those. I think I have six. And this Hoya here, our first Hoya is Hoya Carnosa Stardust. And I really hope that me repotting these, it doesn't kill them. So because I'm potting up into something larger, I'm kind of not really going to water it for longer, just because I know there's more of like a, a greater mass of soil there. So I'm not going to go heavy on the water. I'm probably going to leave them a lot. They are going to look a bit silly. It's kind of unavoidable. They are a little bit too big. But as I say, everything else that I put higher into is doing brilliantly up there. So I'm not too worried. I'll let you know how it goes, obviously. So let's get a question while I take the little pot off because I don't think I can keep the pots. I think we're going to have to get rid of the pots. Oh, I'll do this one now before I get dirty. Someone asked me what microphone I use and I have a plethora of different microphones. So for example, right now, today, I have a Rode uh, video mic 
not the gold, the normal one without the power source. I have a Rode video mic on the camera, so I have a shotgun mic on there. That's actually backup audio. And I have in my butt, I have one of these. What is this? It's a zoom, some sort of zoom recorder. And it looks like this. It's totally external from the camera, which means when I put the camera on, I have to literally clap and sync up the audio. Um, so I keep that on the camera as a backup and then I use this. I haven't always used this. Um, I'm just gonna put it back in my butt. I previously used a Rode, because I love Rode, I think they do great mics, a Rode wireless. It's like a wireless one, so I'm plugged into like a transmitter here and that is received by what is plugged into the camera. Normally I would do that. However, what I didn't want to do was start basically wearing two lav mics on my collar. I may do it sometimes. If you see it, that's why. Um, I just learned really through doing the documentary that if you don't have backup audio, you're screwed because so much of the audio in the documentary was just so terrible. I couldn't do anything about it because I'd only recorded one set of audio. So I actually have two of these. Ben has one as well. Um, so I'm going to be using them from now on if we ever have to film anything. Like if I film a tour in here, I would definitely probably put a shotgun on the camera because why not? Backup audio and then use one of these so I can just walk around and do it. So that's what my microphone is. A lot of people ask me why I get my sounds so good. A lot of it is post editing, I think as well, definitely. Um, it's one thing to have a good microphone, but it's certainly another thing to understand about different aspects of, of audio, like compression, noise cancelling, etc. Um, equalization as well. So all of that, let's, we've almost got this out. I'm just gonna have to make a big pile of mess, but then again, I'm in the shop so I can just sweep it up. It's not the same as being at home. Um, I'm probably gonna tip this out into this pot because I don't actually mind if I get some perlite in here. It's probably a good thing. Next question. Oh, there was kind of a big, there was kind of an amalgamation of questions like how was the launch? When's the next restock, etc. cetera. Um, so I will start with the launch. Um, it's not that it didn't go well, it's just, it didn't go well. By that I mean, um, we have had nothing but issues, and I know that I've spoken to a lot of you about this via email, but it is very important to me to be transparent with you. So the launch was okay, except we had so much traffic on the website that our, I don't know how to really describe it other than the, the shop communicates with like the, the merchant, the, the payment provider, right? So like our shop communicates with PayPal and our shop communicates with Square in our instance. And Square handles credit and debit cards and PayPal handles PayPal, right? So I, I don't know, I still don't know what happened. I don't know, and no one's answering any of my questions. But the first thing that went wrong was, um, for whatever reason, our, sh our website that we have with the shop is crap, and it wasn't getting updated quick enough. So for whatever reason, and I still haven't got to the bottom of it, people were able to pay for an order, but we didn't get the order, right? So the person has already paid, say, 200 pounds for a plant, and that their, their credit card company, or the card company, or the bank has processed that, and paid us the money, and yet we didn't have an order for them. That's legitimately happened, and it's happened, I will be totally, totally transparent with you. I must have done, I think on day one, because we had to organize all the refunds before we can start packing out in case someone cancels an order or someone, you know, something goes wrong, we have to do that before we begin packing. And I think on day one, I kid you not, I probably did 100 refunds, no problem. And those refunds were people without a valid order in our system, they just paid us money. So really sorry if you've had that happen to you. I know I've been profusely apologizing to pretty much everybody in emails. Um, if you think that's happened to you, by the way, feel free to get in touch. Like it is something we know about, but we can't tell if that's happened to you, if that makes any sense, because there's so many orders. We're talking a thousand orders. We can't see where it's happened. So if you think that's happened and you've paid us and your bank has taken money from you, but you don't have an order, you didn't get an order confirmation because that's how you know you've got an order. At least that's how it appears to be so far in our experience. And um, please get in touch and we will look into that as best we can. We've had nothing, and I mean nothing but issues with it. So as a result, I mean, there's been, there's been other things that have happened. We use a kind of like a broker to do our shipping labels as well. And it, once the order is placed, if you change that order on the system, it doesn't update in the shipping label. So if someone wanted to change an address, it didn't change. That was a nightmare. 
Um, stuff like that happened. So we've sent parcels out and they've got lost because they haven't gone to the right place. All of that's happened. But the, really the payment thing is it's just not acceptable. It's just not acceptable to take money from customers and not give them anything. And it makes us look bad because it looks like we've just taken their money. Um, we had Square and PayPal a bit angry with us because they thought we were essentially scamming because when we found out that we'd taken payments, obviously our first step was to refund people. But because this had happened so much, because there was so much traffic, we had so much refunding to do, it flagged every possible thing you could flag and they basically shut us down for a while. So that was not great. It didn't really matter because we had so much to do um, sending out orders. We've only just recently fixed that with PayPal and I think Square as well. But they, we, we pissed them off a little bit. But really, in that situation, I don't know whose fault that is. I, I believe it may be the website. And I think we were speaking to a couple of customers and I'm sure one customer, Nat, one customer told me that I think, did they pay for something and then they didn't, get a notification that someone was out of stock or it, it didn't go through or something, it didn't take the payment for until, it didn't try and reserve the plant on the site until the PayPal confirmation had gone through. But some of those PayPal confirmations had gone through two hours late and that's how it's happened. I think that's how a lot of customers have done that. I don't really know and I wish I had more answers for people that that happened to. Again, I'm really sorry. It was not our intention. That's never happened to us before either. I think it was the traffic on the website. Obviously, we've done launches before and it's got hectic and we've occasionally oversold plans because that is another problem with the website. Um, but th we've never had anything like this happen. I, I didn't foresee it at all. So I'm very sorry to those that that's happened to. If you think it has happened to you, please feel free to check your bank. Um, I think generally if you haven't had an order confirmation from us, then you don't have an order. Um, but just, just let us know if that's happened to you because honestly, we're, we're ready to refund you. We just need your help in ascertaining where this has happened. I think we've got most of them, but that was, that was a whole thing in itself. Right, I'm just kind of leaving that how it is. Sorry, I can't hold it up, but I've potted it. I've just taken the mass that came out of the old pot and just shoved it in. Which brings me on, I know this is a huge rant about how shit my provider of my shop is, but I'm no longer using that shop anymore. I am putting my damn foot down after that. I'm closed for the year now, so I'm not selling any more plants. I may do a couple of auctions. Um, we have beefed up the hosting for auctions, so we're gonna try again. And I believe, don't quote me on this, but I believe it's gonna be a USA auction. Um, you can still bid on plants if you're in the EU, of course, but it's open to the US. I'll let you know on Instagram about that. But So we beefed up that, but I'm not trading on my uh, current shop anymore. I've, I've shut it for the year, but I'll tell you now, I will put a message up on the shop so people don't think it's broken, but I'm not trading with that shop anymore. My goodness me, the amount of problems that we had, we shouldn't have had that many problems. We just shouldn't. It's not okay. So I'm going to close it down and uh, Nat, and I think I'm going to have to get one like custom built or something. I, I'm not entirely sure yet what I'm gonna do. I think I'm gonna have to get one custom built. There's loads of problems that that website had, just little things that irritated me. Um, so the new site needs to eradicate as many of those as possible. I know that Shopify is not good. The fees on Shopify are like eye-watering. I won't be using Shopify, although I'm sure it's great. A lot of websites have like an earnings cap on how much you can actually earn through the shop. So that wasn't really suitable for us. I've gone through many different options, so I, I don't know the solution yet. But for spring, we should have a new website. And I know I probably touched on this in the launch video I did. And I think I said in that video, yo, I was supposed to have a new website, but long story short, that hadn't happened. We did try and have one built and we actually have the, I think the template, the WordPress templates. I think we were gonna go with that. We have that uh, even now after some dispute, shall we say. Um, we have that now, but we're not using that either. I don't think, don't know if WordPress is right for us. I really need to research it. So the shop will be down till spring, but auctions hopefully will still run. We will see if it goes down this time, I don't know what to do because I've paid for like the, the best thing that I can possibly pay for for that. So if that doesn't work, I don't know what I'm gonna do to handle traffic, I have no idea. But that's obviously my main aim is to, to, to get something that actually works, right? Um, so yeah, 
Uh, this is, by the way, again, can't really hold it up to your. This is, oh my God, mental blank. Hoya, Kentiana, Varigata, Lori Lynn. It's Lori Lynn, um, I believe, isn't it? Yes, <laughs> which means it's kind of variegated on the edge and it has pink margins. Sorry, I can't really show you up close. It's very dry as well. And I just watered this a couple of days ago. So it's good that it's getting repotted. That's probably enough on the shop and how it all went. It was a successful launch, don't get me wrong, but just the sheer amount of, of problems we had. Um, shipping wise, before I kind of leave the subject of the shop, shipping wise, it went quite well. There's a couple of plants that just notoriously haven't done well. Um, that happens. So we're dealing with that a little bit, but I think most of them went out and they were pretty stable. I think generally they've been pretty good. Um, so I'm quite happy all in all. It was just, it was, it was a big launch and I don't know if I would do a launch that big again. Never say never. I think once the website holds us down and we don't have other issues, it's probably much easier to do a launch of that size, but we'll see what happens. Let's just get some coir and some hoya in this pot. I'm making a big mess. Loving it, loving life. I'm kind of straddling this chair as well. It's very bizarre. Where's my little drip tray for that one? Again, these pots, I don't love them. They're just, they feel cheap. They look kind of cheap, but for now, just for the sake of growing these things, I'm just gonna, just gonna keep them. There we go. Hoya Kentiana Varigata Lori Lynn, I believe. So pop that one down. I've got some random questions, like for example, what is your skincare routine? Um, I don't like to actively promote this, although these products work brilliantly for me, but I use Drunk Elephant, pretty much Drunk Elephant everything on my face, minus a couple of products. I am still going to do the video on my second channel about all of that, so I will just let you know on Instagram when that happens and I'll go into detail about what I use and why and if I recommend it, if I don't, if I know of something else that works similar, that's fine. I will do that because Drunk Elephant products are pretty pricey and it hurts when I run out of a product and I know I've got to buy a new one, it physically hurts me because uh, it, it really hurts your wallet. But they work for me personally very well. So I use those, but I'll not go into it now. I'll wait for the video. Quick question on the variegated Gloriosum that Enid has at NSA. Um, do I have any plans to ship it over? Uh, so if you didn't know, Enid has, and it's, it's stunning, uh, a variegated Gloriosum in her cave. You can see it on her Instagram. It looks absolutely like bomb. It just looks, I mean, it's better than I could ever grow it, let's be honest. But Enid's just a goddess of growing things. But Enid is looking after that for me. Um, plans to ship it over, yes, but it is likely that part of it will be shipped. So I imagine a cutting would probably be shipped and we'll keep the mother there if Enid is okay with that. I probably should speak to her about it. I think she's enjoying growing it. It certainly looks like she is. So if she's happy to keep it there, that's cool with me. I don't know. That's definitely the plan. I think get a cutting over here and try and grow that out. Basically, that would be a really cool thing to do. Although I don't want to cut it because it looks absolutely stunning. If you haven't seen it, head over to her Instagram. I think it's just NSE Tropicals and have a look because honestly, oh, it's really nice. I think the variegation on it comes out like a yellow and it fades down to a cream. It's just chef's kiss, it's beautiful. So this next plant is Hoya Polyneura Brogate, Brogate. I can't remember how you pronounce it. I know I was told in the last haul, and I can't remember, I'm really sorry. Um, it's, Hol it's Hoya Polyneura, I should say, but it has silver speckles all over it. And I probably, you're not gonna probably see that. I hope you can for all intents and purposes, but it just has silver flecks all over it. So I'm going to be potting that. It's quite a substantial cutting. It has a new leaf growing there and it has a little bit of new growth coming in on the top, which is nice as well. Someone asked me how I, um, what was it? Someone asked me how I avoid basically taking plants from the shop as my own. Um, and that's a really good question actually, because when I started my shop, I behaved very differently to what I do now, if you remember when I started my shop, I went a little bit crazy on the plant halls because now I had access to these plants and I didn't before. Obviously this is way back when, when you couldn't really get a hold of a lot of these plants, uh, whereas now it's easier to. Um, so I was like super happy and I was discovering all these plants and I was loving life. And I found it very difficult not to want to take a plant, <laughs> but honestly, you do get used to it. Like you really, really do. I remember how I was and I'm definitely very chilled now. I think you have to get used to it because if you don't, you're gonna run out of room. Um, I've learned to kind of 
my, my way of keeping plants, apart from certain plants that really kind of steal my heart, I keep a plant for a while and then I might put it into the shop, I might propagate it, I might sell it whole, or I'll, ju I'll just generally just swap them out. I don't swap them out often, but sometimes I do. And I think that's kind of like my way around it. I just keep it fresh. So I don't hoard the plants. I just kind of have one for a while. Okay, I'd like to keep a new plant now. I'll, you know, sell that or I'll give that back to the shop or whatever, and then I'll just swap them out. Um, it really does depend. It really does depend. Massively depends on the plant. But yeah, I, it's not as hard as it looks. I promise you it's not as hard as it looks. It gets, you just get hardened to working around them. Like it's the same thing as when people ask me, um, you know, how do you not freak out if you get like a big import of plants and they're dying on you? It's like, you get used to it. You really do. You just learn over time. This is what happens. This is the peril. You learn that when you get a big order of plants in, for example, you know that 60% of the order that you get in, and I've said this before on Instagram, 60% of a typical order is probably shit. It's probably dying. Um, you just get used to it over time. You see it more and more and more and more. I've had boxes completely go missing like the florida ghost if you remember the florida ghost that was in the documentary that box went missing for what was it three or four months and then it turned up uh i haven't had a replacement for my supply for that box it's just i've just accepted the loss it's it's amazing what you get hardened to i think if you're around it often enough it just happens it's like if i send a plant out to a customer and it dies in the mail it's it happens you've got to accept it you've got to move on you've got to deal with it it just, you just get used to it. It's the best way I can put it. So it's the same thing with taking plants from the shop um, and, and looking after them at home or, or whatever have you. Um, you just, you get more chill. Like when I did, I think I mentioned this in the documentary as well. I was propagating a uh, philodendron jerry horn, I think. And I did about 200 of them and I got a bit sick after that. And I was like, I still love the plant, but my desire to have it has gone down because I've been around it a lot and I'm a little bit desensitized to it. So it takes a lot for me to, to want to haul a plant and, and keep it. Um, and that has been a long process, shall we say. It hasn't always been that way. All right, this one's done. These are like the easiest repots in the world. It's kind of good because to be fair, I don't exactly have a great setup. So not very interesting looking, but there she is, if you can see that. Where's my little drip tray? Again, I don't want to lose my drip tray. I've got three more to go. I think these next questions were slightly more serious in nature, so I want to cover them. Let's just pick up my pad again, because my eyes just are not good under this um, ring light that I've got on. There is stuff about poaching plants, and there is stuff about what I recently did on Instagram, which is uh, I closed off my DMs. Maybe I could do those two, because I think that's going to be enough for the next three plants. So we'll do that today. As always, I'll be doing more reports so we can chat about all kinds of things. Just when I put these things on Instagram, um, feel free to reply to them and suggest topics. Poaching plants, hot topic. So somebody asked me, and I've been asked this a lot before. Um, somebody said to me, you know, what are you doing to ensure that your plants aren't poached, essentially? Like what, what steps are you taking as a shop to ensure that that is not the case? Because obviously poaching is not a good thing and I'm thinking about doing a video on it but it's probably a long way off because there's so many different aspects of plant poaching that I think we all should be aware of and we should all understand we should get a rounded discussion of it um two seconds this is Hoya Carnosa Freckles Splash I don't think it's anything special I believe it's simply a Carnosa that's a little bit more splashy so I don't think it's anything special I don't think I bought this along with the stardust that I potted up at the beginning to see what the difference was. Um, anyway, so basically, um, the steps that I have taken against poaching, oh, the steps that I have taken against poaching, um, I, in my heart, I believe are quite proactive. Um, I will say this, and I know people aren't gonna like this, but I'm gonna say it because it is a fact. <laughs> There's no surefire way of ensuring that your plants are not poached. Think about it. There isn't. We can't. We can do, I'm not saying we can't do anything, I'm just saying it's very difficult. And I'll get into that in a second. So the thing that I've always tried to do is I, I have a, quite a small set of suppliers, I would say, maybe five or six. I don't have a ton of suppliers. Um, a lot of the suppliers I have, I've visited in person 
So I know that they have a nursery. I've walked around there. I've seen how they do things. I, I ask them about their shipping process. I ask what they do to their roots. I ask, you know, when they get plants in, how do they get them in? How long are they with them? How do they propagate? I ask all those questions. I appreciate not everyone can do that. I get that. I'm not saying that people should do that. Um, but people have asked me what I've done. So I have done that. Obviously, I famously went to Thailand in March of this year. And that's kind of what I did. I, I went to Thailand and I had a look around some suppliers there as well. And I, I saw them in the nurseries and stuff. So that's a really cool thing to be able to do. Uh, what else have I done? Generally, just having a list of supplies that I know check out, like I know they're above board as far as everyone else knows as well, because um, people talk, I guess. And just making sure that when I have a supplier, I like if I'm going to engage with a new supplier, I want to see pictures of the nursery. I want to see what their setup is. That's a really big one. Because if they don't have one, that's not really right. I look at how long they've been trading as well. And I'm not saying, again, that people that have traded longer aren't poaching. I'm saying it's more likely that they have built up what they have. So that's another indicator. Um, I just do what I can. It depends on the type of plant as well. Like, I know my Pictum, my Aglaonema Pictum, have come from a good place because the supplier checks out. But I know, I think in particular, um, Aglaonema Pictum tricolor that was down here, but it's not now. Um, that's been poached a lot recently, and there's a lot of doubt on that. Um, so I guess it depends on the plan as well as to whether it's arguably dodgy. Um, not only that, but I buy, if I'm going to buy like one type of plant, like say, I should be able to do this. I'm looking at hundreds of them. Uh, a jerry horn or a, a philodendron dark lord. I will buy a lot of them of the one plant and I will use them as mothers. So I try and eliminate stuff like that as much as possible by propagating my own. Um, obviously, I technically can't guarantee that the mothers aren't poached. All I can tell you is that I check people out that I buy from supplier wise pretty extensively. And I do everything I can to make sure they've got a setup, they've got, you know, a nursery, they check out, they're, they're reputable, people speak highly of them, I don't hear any bad juju about them and everything else. There's not a lot you can do other than that. Um, I'm, as I say, I'm debating making a video on it, and I think in that video we would we could maybe talk about what you you know you guys could maybe do to help with that because your situation is different from mine. I have suppliers, you arguably may not. So if you're buying from plant shops, that's like 10 times harder for you, right? Because you don't even know where these plants have come from by the time they get to you. I appreciate that. But wherever possible, I've tried to gain an understanding of how the supplier operates, what their nursery looks like, where it is. Is it actually visible on Google Earth? Because yes, I do do that. Not ashamed to admit it. And just see, just see what the consensus is and make an opinion based on that. I get a lot of things into my inbox, well, before I closed off my DMs, I get a lot of requests into my inbox asking to supply me. And you can just tell it's dodgy. <laughs> it just has a dodgy vibe. The Instagram has a dodgy vibe. What the person's saying has a dodgy vibe and everything else. Um, yeah, I'm not gonna go into anything else on that because there's, there's so much. Honestly, there's so much on poultry. I don't, I don't really wanna get into it now because I do think it's a video in itself. But that's what I've tried to do. And that is what I will always try to do. Um, I'm actually debating, I mean, I was going to be doing this before COVID happened. I'm actually debating personally going to the nurseries where I can um, and travel and personally pick out the plants that I want shipped back to me. I'm genuinely thinking of doing that. I've spoken to Ben a little bit about that as well. Ben's up for it. Um, so I might do that, but obviously I can't do that yet. I need to wait for COVID to not be a thing. So we'll sit tight on that, I suppose. But I don't plan on taking on any new supplies or anything. I'm going to stick with the ones um, that I know check out. And that's the best thing I can do right now to ensure that my plants have come from good places. I mean, if you want to get really technical, again, no one's going to like this. But take, for example, a philodendron gloriosum. They don't grow in your living room. Do you know what I mean? They had to, they had to have come from somewhere. And the fact that someone is producing them in a nursery, even if that nursery is above board, it wasn't just growing in the nursery. It has been removed from arguably the wild, which is why I say, you know, a video on plant poaching, it's a thing. It's a whole thing that we need to understand and really talk about because do you think I have, you know, Anthurium warraquinum, I'm pointing at one, growing out of 
you know, the ground in this shop? No, obviously not. And you don't either. Some people do, don't get me wrong. Some people have these plants growing in their back garden and that's amazing for them. I, I envy you. But in a lot of cases, no, they have been removed. Um, so that that is a thing. I'm not going to draw on about it because honestly, you know fine well, we could chat about plant poaching forever. But it is a really interesting topic. I would love to chat with you guys about it. I'd love to chat with other people in the field about it. I'd love to chat with other YouTubers about it. So I'm probably going to do that. So I'm not going to say any more on that. Plus, I've gone on quite a bit about that. That only took one hire to do all that. The last major topic, I think, uh, yeah, pretty much, is uh, people were kind of joking on about it when they told me to talk about it because I can see they're kind of on my side about it. A lot of people asked me to talk about what I've done recently with, uh, I guess you could summarize it and say my Instagram DMs. Two minutes. This is Hoya Kentiana variegated, only I think it's actually way at I. Again, I, I don't know the difference, but... That's this one. It's, sim it's similar to the other one I held up earlier, but it's a bit different. This one's variegated down the center. The other one was variegated around the leaf margin and it had pink margins. So the other one is harder to get than this one. I know that. Um, but yeah. So let's talk about some, some, some stuff. So I'm not going to beat around the bush, guys. A lot of you know that recently I've just had a lot of shit. <laughs> I, I'm laughing about it because it's the best way I can deal with it, but I, I've had an unprecedented amount of shit from people in the community for months now. And that was really going on the entire amount of time that I did, that I was actually making the documentary when you guys didn't even know. Um, I got essentially blamed for plant poaching and I got blamed for, this is way back when, I got blamed for all the price increases, etc. cetera. Um, and I made a video about it called My Peace, which a lot of you guys know. Um, and I think I said in that video, you know, um, I've got so much shit going on at the minute, I don't need this. Like there's one person that knows what's going on for me right now and I don't need it kind of thing. Um, that was me talking about the documentary, by the way, the, doing up this place. And the person that knew about it was Pam. It's Pamela. Pam's pretty plant size. I keep calling her by her Instagram handle. I'm so sorry, Pam. I keep doing it, it's really bad. Uh, Pam's Pretty Plants on YouTube is the only other lady that knew. Um, if you don't know her, I love her. Please check her out. She's an angel, and I mean it. She's an angel. So please go and check out her content. She's lit. Um, anyway, so I got a lot of crap for that, and I I don't believe I deserved the crap for that. I'm going to say it. might get more hit for saying it, but I don't care. I'm not going to be told what I can and can't say on my own channel. Uh, I mean that with the utmost respect possible. But I got a lot of shit for that. Um, I did the video on it. I, I said my piece. That was the whole point. Um, and all was well until, obviously, I did the documentary. Um, I, th I don't think I got hate around the documentary. I think generally that went well. It was well received. I don't think I got much shit anyway. Um, there's always someone, but generally no. Um, until I, as you know, there's no point not mentioning it because everyone was there. <laughs> the whole of the internet kind of knew about it. And I'm not trying to bring it up because believe me, I don't want to relive any of that. But anyway, I, I launched the shop and I, I made the stock previewable after the documentary when the launch was coming. And what I can only really describe as a shitstorm ensued. Um, people blamed me once again for poaching. They said my prices were ridiculous. Um, fine. I, I don't... Th this is such a... Difficult subject for me to talk about guys. You've got to believe me because I Don't want I want to give you good advice. I want to be there for you I want to help you out with things like scams and stuff like that like the Congo thing But on the other side of it and I said this in my my peace video I own a plan business so I have to walk a line There's certain things I just can't do you know and I've, I've covered this in that video So I'm not gonna go over it, but I run a plan business. It is separate from my channel, um, but I run a plant business and I cannot price something not for what it's worth. I would go out of business, okay? And again, I'm not going to go on about this because I, I don't, I know I don't need to explain myself. So all these lovely people probably 
about to write a comment saying that I don't need to explain myself. I know this. But anyway, I need to sell things for what they're worth. It's basic economics, it's supply and demand, it's basic stuff. I didn't mean to offend anybody. No one has to buy from my shop to support me. You give me all the support I would ever need anyway. Everyone knows this, I've said this. But anyway, long story short, I got a lot of shit and it, it got, it, it wasn't criticism anymore. It went past criticism. Criticism just left the building very, very early on. And it was just, again, it, I, I couldn't call it bullying. I could definitely call it harassment. The amount of nasty messages I had in my DMs, um, I know some of you maybe saw one or two, it was just horrible. And people go onto my personal Instagram, I was called a bitch, I was called pretty much everything you can name on the internet. Uh, I had threats from left, right and centre, uh, which I know a couple of you saw. I have way more than them, that was just one example. I just had endless crap and I just feel like I'm just, I don't need this anymore, guys. And I like to think I'm a strong person, but everyone has their weak points, right? And I don't need to listen to people that aren't criticizing me, because again, there is a line and there is a difference, that are just being straight up nasty. I don't need it. But the problem is, that's just, that's not just on like comments and story posts that people go on these big tirades. It's not just that, it's, it comes into my DMs. And it's sad that I have to place boundaries on people that have done nothing wrong, you know, nice people that message me, but I had to, I had to do it for myself. I cannot physically deal with an influx like that, good or bad, if I'm honest. Like I, I should have shut my DMs off a long time ago, but really the catalyst for that was the, the hate I received around about that time. And honestly, the, the amount of entitlement some of these nasty people had really blew me away. It blew me away. Like somebody said that I couldn't even talk badly about the haters because I was emotionally abusing my haters. Someone said that because I gave an example of the harassment that I was receiving on my stories and I said, you know, this isn't okay to do to anybody, by the way. Um, I was apparently emotionally abusing the person that sent me that horrendous DM to my personal Instagram. And it just, it just got silly. And it's like, we should be able to say all these negative things on your feed. And it's like, no, there's no, there's no law that says that I have to deal with negativity and I have to collate it all on my social feeds. I don't want this to turn into a rant, guys. I really don't. But at the end of the day, people can say about me whatever they like. They have that freedom of speech. Of course they do. Would I have a sense of that? No but they don't have to say it all over my feeds like that. I don't have to put up with that. And I tell you what I don't understand. I know that I'm one of very few plant YouTubers that doesn't really censor their comment sections, generally speaking. I just, I tend not to. A lot of the times you, you may have seen on my videos, I get the odd hate comment. It just gets left. Maybe I haven't seen it, maybe I have, I don't know. But a lot of the time I just leave it because I'm like, ah, if they really want to make a big fuss, let them. But I know a lot of other YouTubers don't do that and they remove it. And I don't know if it's because I previously didn't remove stuff and then all of a sudden I was. Um, no one liked me for it. And all of a sudden I was a massive asshole and people were literally calling me names because I was removing nasty comments on, on my Instagram posts and stuff. And it's like, what? You're angry <laughs> because I won't give you a platform for your hate. And that's all it is. I was having to tell people, look, if you want to go and discuss things, you're welcome to, just don't do it here. Go and do it on your own stories, because a lot of them do that. But it's like, we need to talk about this more, because I know I'm not actually the only influencer. I hate that word. I really hate that word more than you'll ever know. But I hate that influencers have to deal with that. There is nothing in the job description that says we have to put up with that, right? I can't stop people saying whatever they want about me, whether I'm the best person in the world or I'm the biggest bitch in the world, that's fine. I can't stop people from doing that, obviously not. People will say what they're gonna say, that's absolutely fine. But I don't have to allow everyone to post it on my shit and send it to my DMs. I really wanna sneeze so bad, so bad. There's no law that says I have to have that come into my inbox and deal with it. Like, who says that? Who says that? Who makes that okay? What logic is that? So. With a heavy heart, I decided to shut off my Instagram DMs. This is a Hoya Carnos uh, Grey Ghost, by the way. Um, I really, really knows all of a sudden. 
I, I shut them off and it, it was really, it was a decision carefully considered because the amount of time between that launch and me actually closing them off, it's been what, two, three weeks? Um, I think people thought it was a knee-jerk reaction to some political stuff that went down on my Instagram. It totally wasn't, it was unrelated. I spoke to a few YouTubers and got their opinions about doing this and I didn't just speak to plant YouTubers. I have some friends, um, acquaintances, I'd, I'd call them acquaintances, not friends. Um, just because I don't know them that well, but I have some acquaintances that do other types of videos on YouTube, some some larger YouTubers, because I was asking them, look, how do you deal with this kind of stuff? What what have you done to combat it? Because everyone, no doubt, gets it. I know I'm not special in that sense. And every single YouTuber that I spoke to said to me, yo, what what have you done with regards to boundaries? And I was like, what do you mean? <laughs> because I didn't have any. And it's a shame because my philosophy has always been like, you know, we'll all chill together. You know, I'm contactable. I wanna have the dialogue with you and everything else. But unfortunately it's, it's got to the point where I can't do that. But a lot, but every single YouTube, and I mean every single one, I must've spoken to five or six, every single one mentioned one word and that was boundaries. And they said, you know, you, it gets to a point where you, you can't, I can't interact with people the way I could at, at five or 10,000 subscribers. I can't, I cannot do it. I can't, it's not possible, right? There's too many, too many people. It would take hours. I would never be able to run a shop or even run a channel if I did that. But I, I can't interact that way. So I, I don't really know why I was trying to. It, it was a big strain, um, really, really big strain. But every single YouTube was like, yo, you, you need boundaries. like. If you have a video out, don't read every single comment, be there for the first hour, talk to your subscribers, interact, and then leave. Um, and, and just consider that okay. Um, I still don't have a moderator, by the way. I don't know how to go about that anyway. Um, you know, just have those boundaries. Shut off your Instagram DMs, shut off your story replies, shut off your Twitter DMs or anything like that. Just shut them off. It's too much noise. And if you're, if you're getting this kind of treatment, it's not worth it. And I don't, I don't ever want it to get to a point where this isn't worth it for me. That, that I love doing what I do. You guys know this. I don't ever want it to get like that. So the boundaries, the best boundaries that I could put in place were basically what loads of people, every single person kind of suggested, which is close off those DMs. You know, don't turn off notifications for stuff. Don't have those anymore. Um, just, just don't look. And it, it's hard not to look. This is what people don't get. Before turning off the messages, a lot of people would probably tell me to just ignore the haters or whatever and look at the good messages. But the problem with that is you can't ignore it because you've already read it. And you have to, if you wanna read messages from your subscribers, you gotta read your messages. And you don't know what's in there. So unfortunately, the only way to eradicate that is to just remove the contact. And honestly, I, I, I'm not, gonna sit here and say I don't feel better because I do. I feel way less stress about it. it. It was pretty much instant. I just felt better. I noticed that a lot of people, I mean, within, it, it was kind of crazy. It was within like an hour of me closing them off. I had people come to my personal Facebook. That is a personal Facebook, by the way. It's not a page for Kaylee Allen. I mean, that is my name. You get, you get my point. It's my personal Facebook saying like, I couldn't get through to you on, on Instagram. It wouldn't let me. So I'm coming here. I don't want to speak to you about this or that and the other. Or they would do it on my shop email um, for my customers, or they would do it on my personal emails. And I'm like, I've shut them off. Please respect my boundaries. I've shut them off for a reason. The decision to do that wasn't rushed. You know what I'm saying? It, it was it was taken really seriously. And I spoke at length with people for a long time and I made the decision to shut them off. I can't tell you that they're gonna come back on because I don't think they will because if I happen to grow larger, it would only get harder to turn them back on, not easier. So I just couldn't deal with the noise anymore. Um, I, I kind of think that if a lot of things didn't happen so close to each other, I wouldn't have reached this point so soon because um, there's a lot of things back to back, um, but I probably would have reached it eventually. So I don't want anyone to take negatively from me doing that. I know it sounds really negative, but I'm, I'm very conscious of filming this, that I've brought that across negatively. 
Um, I'm just being open about my feelings though. Um, I just, I don't get why people think that I'm here to take people's shit. Cause let me tell you something, I'm not. Um, I have my own life, my own thing that I'm doing, my own goals, my own wants, my own things that feed my mind and my mental health. And this was very important for my mental health to turn it off. It doesn't mean to say that I don't want to talk to you guys or anything like that. I absolutely do. I'm, I'm thinking maybe I can do more chatty videos. We'll, we'll find a way to bring it back, the interaction that I'm losing. We're just going to have to do it in a more controlled manner, I think. Um, a lot of people have tried to say that I can't handle basic criticism on my Instagram feed. And I tell you something, some of those messages were absolutely disgusting, some of those comments. So criticism is one thing, but it got real bad real quick. And you know what it is? People tell me, people told me at the time that all of this stuff, I'm not going into it, went down. Um, you know, as a businesswoman, you, you should be able to take this criticism on your business. One, maybe only about 10% of the comments were arguable criticism. Um, but two, you didn't write it on my shop post. I had two identical posts. One was on my, my personal Instagram, my, my Kaylee Allen Instagram, sorry, not my personal one, that's a different one. And one was on the Red Plant Shop. People didn't really attack the post on the Red Plant Shop's Instagram. They came to mine. And I think that speaks volumes. I honestly do think that speaks volumes. And when it gets to the point where people are calling me a bitch and other words that I, I don't think I can say on this channel, um, I don't know what point you think you're making anymore, but I don't have to listen to that. And to suggest that I should be allowing you to write horrible things like that um, because I'm an influencer. I don't know where the fuck you grew up or who taught you that was okay. It's not. Um, and I will say this now for any other um, YouTubers watching or anyone in a position where this might occur. You don't, you don't, you know what, you don't even have to be a YouTuber. If you think that that's part of the job, I'm here to tell you it isn't part of the job. It's only part of the job if we allow people like that to do that to us. Um, it's not, we, we don't have to take crap like that, you know? And I don't understand where this, this mentality has come from where if we're public figures, we're not people anymore. The amount of things that people have said about me online or they've done in like Instagram stories or they've gone on these big harassment rants that take weeks of their time, and I mean it, like weeks. Imagine if you did it to a regular person. What would happen? What would people think of you? Imagine, just imagine, if I did it to you. What would you think of me? What would happen to me if I did that to you? Now, the only difference there between me doing that to somebody and somebody else doing that to someone else or someone else doing it to me is the difference in followers. And it's bullshit. It's not one rule for us, the, these beings that apparently aren't people anymore. Apparently we stopped being humans. And it's another rule for other people. And there's, there's too many people now throwing, and it's not just on me, it's other YouTube as well. I've been speaking to them um, in the plant community. Too many people label things as criticism when it's just, being nasty. And I'm here to tell you, I'm not doing that. I'm not, I'm not gonna have people stop me from doing the things I love. Um, I don't want people to take my enjoyment out of this. And I owe it to the people that do follow me and do enjoy my content, my videos, anything. I owe that to them to ignore these people. And so far it's been good. I think the only complaints I've had are the people that I've either blocked or ignored because they feel that they have a right to free speech on my platforms. Uh, that's honestly the argument they've given me. So that is what I've done. I've shut off my Instagram DMs. I'm sorry, this is like the longest rant ever, but you know what? I was gonna mention this in another video. I may as well do it now. I'm sat here, there's a camera on. Um, I've shut off DMs. I've shut off most things. If, if there's something that I can turn off, I've, I've generally turned it off and I'm, I'm feeling better. And it's not that I don't want to sit here and I don't want to be able to read a DM and help someone with care tips. It's not that I don't want to do that. It's really not. Or I don't want to help someone idea plan or, or something like that. It's just, I, I, guys, I get thousands of DMs, thousands and thousands and thousands. I cannot do it. It's not feasible. And I don't want to employ someone to do it because then what's the point? What is the point of 
someone else reading messages for me and possibly replying to them. What is the point of that? You're wanting to speak to me. You don't want to speak to someone on my behalf. Do you know what I mean? There's no point. So I've done that. I'm feeling better. Those are my transparent reasons. And quite frankly, I don't care right now if to some people I appear weak for doing that. Um, I'm here to tell you that it's okay to do it. And it is. So whether you're a YouTuber or not, if you feel that you're just not happy with the, the lines of communication or, or anything of the sort, cut it. Just cut it. Cut it out. Um, either temporarily or permanently. Um, you, you didn't sign up to be abused on the daily. Um, nobody does. Um, maybe racists. That could be argued. You just didn't sign up to it. So that's all I have to say on that. That's a really long, possibly very serious report. I'm sorry. I don't know why I get myself into these <laughs> really serious subjects, but that's kind of it for this video. Um, I'm not going to pick them all up. Where's my little drip tray? Oh, it's here. I've reported some of these. I think they're going to do great. I do have some more to report. I will do them at a later date. I do have, you might be able to see it. Can you see that? Stromanti Trio Star that I just hauled last week. Um, I have to report that, but I'll not be doing it on camera. It's just, it's a nightmare. You won't even see anything because it's a big bush. Um, so I will be probably potting other stuff in the absence of filming it, but, but we will speak again very soon. I don't like apologizing all the time because people get at me for it, and rightly so. That's all I ever do is say I'm sorry, um, but it wasn't my intent to make the video this long and about arguably negative stuff. It really wasn't. Um, but I've said it now and I don't have to address it again. So that's cool. We can move on. But I want to be transparent with you guys and tell you why I do some of the things I do. And that's it. So we've covered a lot in today's video. Editing's going to be great. Can't wait. Um, because I think I've been recording like an hour and a half. So that's it for this video. And I don't know what next week's video is as I'm recording this. Um, but I will see you in the next one. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you next week. Bye.